This video is brought to you by Practical Music Theory for the Rock Guitarist, my new book which is a comprehensive guide to all aspects of music theory necessary for playing rock guitar. From blues to the cycle of fifths, from understanding and using modes to choosing the right notes for a melodic solo, from pentatonic scales to chord construction and keys, it's all covered in a clear and concise manner. With accompanying video demonstrations, jam tracks and tabs, you learn to use the knowledge you gain in accessible ways that make sense for less than the cost of a few guitar lessons. Check out the link in the description for more details. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. It's all about this rather lovely guitar today. As you can tell, it's a single cut. Specifically, it's a Les Paul. Even more specifically, it's an Epiphone Les Paul. And even more specifically, it's one of those um, Epiphone 59 Les Paul standards that came out uh, a few years ago. Um, you know, all these guitars have been well documented, so I'm not going to blether too much about the uh, the specs and everything on this. I'll put a link to them uh, down in the description in case you you know need your memory refreshing or something. Uh, this is the second one of these guitars that I've had. Um, the first one was, I believe, was it 2023 sometime? Um, and it was in like the sort of dark sunburst finish. And, um, at the time I was quite taken with it, but it was a case of, well, I've already got a Les Paul. I've already got a nice Gibson Les Paul tribute. Um, so which one's the, which one do I want to keep? And it ended up being the Les Paul tribute that I kept. And now another one of these has, um, you know, kind of fallen at me hands. Um, basically remember that, uh, PRS S2 standard 24 that, uh, you used to see rather a lot of on this channel. Well, ever since, you know, I had to adapt my, um, playing technique for reasons that I'm tired of talking about, frankly, but you know what I'm on about. Um, <clears throat> That guitar just was never quite as uh, comfortable and um, nice to play anymore. So I was wanting to get rid of it, and I was offered a trade with uh, this. In case you're interested in the colour, um, this Lemon Burst, you don't normally see these guitars in this colour. This one was uh, exclusive, or is exclusive, I think, in the UK to Andertons, and I believe in the States to, I think, Sweetwater. Uh, only got them in this colour, and uh, that just gives it a little bit more exclusivity. Whether or not it is a long-term resident here at Robson Towers is to be decided as yet. Um, you know, this whole kind of thing of, well, I, I don't need more than one Les Paul. Well, you know, I could apply that to Telecasters, really, couldn't I? I've got a few of those. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll give you my thoughts on this guitar and some weights and measures and, um, you know, how it's settling in right after we've heard how it sounds in a mix.
And as usual, you'll find a full tab for that piece of music in both Guitar Pro and PDF formats, along with a clip of me playing it, and the jam track to play along with yourself. All of that is up on my Patreon page. There's the address, and the link is in the description. As I'm sure you know by now, $3 or £3 a month gets you access to all of these additional goodies, these tabs and jam tracks and all that kind of good stuff that I usually put up, um, usually at least three times a week. And a massive, massive thank you to everyone who supports me in that, or any of the other ways, all of which are downstairs in the description okay you probably already know what i'm going to say now if you're a long-term viewer of this channel but all of the guitar tones there were courtesy of the vintage channel on the blue guitar amp one mercury edition which has a really nice old cranked plexi kind of tone the cleaner sounds exactly those settings there but just backing the guitars uh, volume off a little and uh, for the shouty high gain stuff um same settings again but with the new x horseman pedal going into the front end of it and um yeah i mean that that riff on the intro of that piece um it does have that sort of muscular kind of it'll stop a tank at 40 paces uh kind of vibe to it it it's um you know you, you would be under no illusion about what kind of guitar you're listening to there and a damn good version of that particular sound i think um as i said some weights and measures for this guitar you can see it's a chunky old hector 4.0 kilos uh it weighs in at and a uh, nut width of 42.8 millimeters uh first and 12th fret uh neck profiles there and the dc pickup readings 8.35k on the bridge 7.91 on the neck and the middle position is 4.06 as i'm sure you're aware by now as i say these guitars are well documented um you know we've got a, a, a set of burst bookers in here and you know all the 50s wiring and everything and um you know isn't it a stunning looking guitar as well it really is uh there's a lot to like about this guitar i mean quite honestly the sound it's um you know it's it's a classic meat and potatoes kind of uh straight between the eyes both barrels uh rock and roll les paul sound isn't it really it plays like an absolute um hot knife through but i'm just looking for the uh action ruler here uh excuse me i'm just wrecking the place let's just have a quick look at the uh 12th fret action on the base side uh i'm gonna say that that is at the 12th fret uh 1.25 millimeters so beautiful low slinky action no dead spots no choking out no fret buzz excellent setup on this guitar and um you know i don't i'm not entirely sure if that's how it came from anderton's or whether the chap that i um i traded uh, the prs with for this um is uh, is responsible for this setup but somebody who uh set this guitar up certainly knew what they were doing it um it plays really beautifully and you know it's it you do that you know, you don't, you kind of keep the headstock out of shot and you could be looking at, you know, an R9 or something, couldn't you really? It's, it's got that kind of look about it. And personally, these days, um, this name on the headstock for a long time for me was, um, well, no, not the name on the headstock. I'm going to, I'm going to scotch that. The, the old Epiphone headstock shape, you know, where the corners were clipped off. That was always something of a, a deal breaker for me. It just, it just looked wrong on a Les Paul. But the more I see of this, um, this new Epiphone headstock shape, the more I'm liking it and the more it, it just kind of looks right. It looks like in keeping with the guitar. Um, as I say, a lot to like about this guitar, but there are, well, there is one thing that I'm not overly fond of on it, and it's the finish. Um, you know, it's got like, the, I don't think they call it a satin finish, I think they call it an aged gloss finish. Um, and it's kind of got a satiny sort of feel, but it's a very plasticky kind of polyester or poly is it polyester or polyurethane a poly we'll say kind of feel to the finish and you know that is or that was rather one of the main reasons why you know when i was comparing the last one of these that i i had um last year to um this my uh gibson les paul tribute it's one of the things that kind of just was a major factor in making me decide to decide to keep this guitar rather than the other 59 uh, Epiphone that I had. Um, 
And the thing is, if I just go and grab another guitar, uh, let's grab this one here. You've seen quite a lot of this one on the channel lately. This Jet uh, JT350 that I had a bit of work done on it and everything. This, the, the satin finish on the neck on this is a poly finish. But it's a much, much nicer poly finish than on the uh, on that Epiphone. Um, it's not a deal breaker by any stretch of the imagination, but it's just one of those things that makes you think, why couldn't they? You know, um, you know, this here feels woody and organic and and just you know, kind of really, really pleasant to play on. The Epiphone neck doesn't feel unpleasant to play on, but it doesn't feel as nice as it could do. And I'm just thinking back as well. Um, another Epiphone Les Paul that I uh, reviewed, I think in the last couple of years, let me get this right, it was the Les, Le, Epiphone Les Paul Classic Worn, uh, in like a gold top guitar, and that had a really nice satin finish on the neck, um, nicer than this. So Epiphone can do a really nice satin finish, but yet they haven't done it on this, which is a, you know, um, until I suppose the, um, that Epiphone, uh, Kirk Hammett, Greeny Moore kind of guitar came out. This was the most expensive Epiphone money could buy. Um, so perhaps a missed opportunity. Perhaps I'll get used to it. Um, whether or not this is going to be a long term keeper guitar, I, as I say, I don't really know. I haven't figured that out yet. What I do know is that, um, the reason I traded uh, the the PRS for this was because I was trying to sell the PRS and it was just going nowhere. It's not a good time at the moment to be selling a guitar. So this one's going to be hanging around for a little while until the kind of market bubbles up a, again a little bit. So maybe I'll get used to the feel of it. I don't want to make a big thing of this plasticky feel. It's not like, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10, it's kind of, it matters around about on a scale of 2 or 3 really um but it's just like you know you could have made it just that little bit better um but yeah beautiful looking guitar fantastic sounding guitar and it plays absolutely astonishingly well so what's the next logical thing to do well you probably already know this another shootout between an epiphone and a gibson yeah the internet needs another one of those doesn't it um you know, I did do um, a shootout between this Gibson Les Paul tribute and the last one of these that I had um, uh, when this guitar had a set of uh, 490s in it, a 490T and a 490R pickups. But since then, this guitar, where are we? This guitar now has um, a set of burst buckers in it as well. Burst bucker two and three, same as this guitar. So that'll be an interesting comparison, won't it? And um, I'll reserve judgment on, as I say, the long-term future of uh, of the Epiphone until at least we've done that uh, shoot out there. But um, for the moment, I'm enjoying having a nice pair of Les Pauls around the house. And um, I'm going to have some fun. But that is pretty much the video for today, folks. Um, hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and found it informative and entertaining in some small way. And if that's the case, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so. And why not drop me a like as well while you're at it. Don't forget the live stream every Friday, 5pm UK time. We drink beer and talk about stuff, music, guitars, whatever. It's a great way to kick off the weekend. And I'd love to see you there if you can make it. But for now, I'll bid you all a good day and say thank Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Look after yourselves, folks. Stay well, stay safe, and above all, stay sane. Bye for now.